Hi, Gary Stearman. Today, as I'm recording this, it is the 19th of April. We're going to talk about Israel and Iran, and we're going to talk about a news item, in fact, two different news items that I know you haven't heard about, because they would be either on page 18 at the bottom of the page in your newspaper, or way below the fold. But, but here is a fascinating news release from an Israeli news agency, and it says the fundamental rift on Iran between U.S. President Barack Obama and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has burst into the open Monday, April 16th, when high-ranking Israeli officials close to Netanyahu directly accused the president of reneging on a U.S.-Israel understanding that was reached ahead of scheduled talks in Istanbul, Turkey. Behind all the showbiz of Istanbul, they charged, the U.S. and Iran had reached secret agreements in clandestine bilateral contacts channeled through Paris and Vienna. The argument surfaced last Sunday, as we're making this, when Netanyahu said the U.S. and world powers, by agreeing to hold more talks in Baghdad next month, had given Tehran a freebie, quote-unquote, of five more weeks to continue enrich, enriching uranium without restrictions. By singling out the U.S., the Prime Minister aimed his comment directly at President Obama. And so, just to make it simple, Netanyahu said, look, President Obama, you gave Iran a freebie by allowing them six more weeks of free operation and uh, essentially tipping your hand to the United States position in the Istanbul talks ahead of time. That report uh, goes nicely with another report from the Times of Israel, uh, datelined April 15th, a major television station in Israel uh, last Sunday night, as we make this, broadcast a detailed report on how Israel will go about attacking Iran's nuclear uh, facilities in the event that diplomacy and sanctions fail and Israel decides to carry out a military strike. So right at the very same time that Netanyahu was accusing our president of giving Iran a freebie, an Israeli television network station, by the way, uh, came up with this report. Paragraph 2 says, and this is from the Times of Israel, the report screened on the main evening news of Channel 10 was remarkable both in terms of the access granted to the reporter who said he had spent weeks with pilots and other personnel he interviewed and in the fact that his assessments on a strike were cleared by a military censor. So Israeli military censors have lifted the ban on news. They're allowing the Israeli media to begin to talk about a scheduled attack on Iran. In other words, they want it to be known that this is in their future planning. Uh, th all of this is brinksmanship, by the way. Paragraph 3 of this report, no order to strike is likely to be given before the, the uh, scheduled Istanbul talks, peace talks. They're called the 5 plus 1 talks. And uh, uh, according to Israeli officials and uh, the Israeli media, no uh, invasion of, is of uh, Iran is likely before those talks are completed. But this coming summer, this is a quote, will be hot but tense. Mm -hmm. Not only hot but tense. No order to strike is likely to be given again before those talks in Istanbul are completed. In the event that negotiations fail and the order is given for Israel to carry out an attack on Iranian nuclear facilities, quote-unquote dozens, if not more, planes will take part in the missions. Attack and escort jets, tankers for mid-air refueling, electronic warfare planes, and rescue helicopters will all be involved. And by the way, they will be using the older model uh, F-15s that were sold some years ago to the Israeli Air Force. And here's an interesting inside note on how the Israeli Air Force works. These F-15s were stripped down to the absolute minimum. That is, everything was taken off the airplane that didn't need to be there, giving the airplane more speed, more maneuverability, and more range. And uh, the Israeli Air Force 
F-15 is much, much faster and more maneuverable than any other jet in the world, so they say. And those will be the jets in use should the uh, Israelis uh, sound the signal to go ahead and invade Iran. I think this is a fascinating report. They mention that the older versions of the F-15 can fly further than any other plane in Israel's arsenal, puts them on the front line of any potential attack, one Israeli uh, Air Force pilot was quoted as saying the Israeli version of the F-15 uh, is a plane with a very wide range of operation, a combination of relatively energy-efficient engines and significant flightworthiness regarding weapons and fuel. The IAF has the full-size unmanned plane called the Aton, which also is said to be able to fly to Iran. This would be what we would call a drone, an unmanned aircraft. Uh, the Israeli model is called the Etan. You might be watching for that in the news because that would be part of the attack, by the way, sending unmanned uh, fighter bombers. And we don't know much about the Etan. It's still uh, a relatively new development. But Israel is obviously, A, very serious about the attack, and B, ready to let the world know what they are on the verge of doing all at the same time that we have this, this other news item going on. Obama's secret dealings with Iran conflict with U.S.-Israeli understandings. So we have uh, essentially the United States encouraging Iran and discouraging Israel. Israel retaliating by publicizing what they're getting ready to do. This is the very definition of brinksmanship, playing on the edge playing off the cuff, ad-libbing a military exercise. The whole thing is dangerous beyond belief, and the odds are global in consequence. And so uh, I would suggest being in prayer for Israel, and for the Middle East, and for the United States, and for our leadership, because we are on the very verge of something cataclysmic. And all you have to do is pick up the news and read. That is, if you know where to look. But keep watching Prophecy in the News because we search and scan every day for these uh, back page items, which I think are very, very important. Read your Bible. Prophecy is coming to life. The stage is being set in the Middle East for what the prophets talked about 3,000 years ago. It's amazing, isn't it? Gary Stearman, we are always watching. You be watching too. And keep looking up, everybody.